good evening yeah it was okay so it was um Actually, I didn't know how to get anyone to support me, so I was thrilled, I was impressed, and that's why I'm here this evening, for the glory to God. So that's how God works. So I'm going to start by saying that, um, I don't know. I don't understand this thing. Say, hold on, we are telling more followers. But I think I have to start because um, it's a very long topic. So we're going to start with prayers. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Thank you for giving us a good day. Thank you, Jesus, because you are God and you will remain God forever. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because at every point in time, you are always raising people up to hold up the banner. And this is another time again that you have decided to, pr to tell the world about your message that will never change with time no matter what the devil does to make people think it has changed. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, for the privilege to use me at this time again. All the glory to your name. Father, we are here this night. I pray for the wisdom of God. I pray for the feeling of the Holy Spirit to preach this message. And I pray that the power of the Lord will flow through me to everyone that will hear this message in the name of Jesus. I pray that everyone will pick something tangible. And by the time we shall end tonight's video, we want to give all glory to your name. We commit the environment, the network, the people coming in, the environment. We soak it with the blood of Jesus. We cancel every plan of the of darkness and we put every demon in bondage in Jesus name we have prayed amen so we're gonna start okay let me see if I can just share it to someone the person that pushed me to come <laughs> share it to him so I shared it to him already so we are starting with the very first Bible passage um Okay, let me write it. Let me take time to write it. Because of people that will be joining. Genesis 38. Verse 1 to... Oh, sorry. Verse 15 to 26. So that's the first Bible passage we are reading so let's read very fast because yesterday I spent two hours to do the video but I only saw 44 minutes or so so let's quickly do it um, let me see can we can we is it possible to okay let me write I'm in men's I don't have to pin. Okay. okay, I already pinned the topic. So let's read very fast. When Judah saw her, he taught her to be an alert because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray. I pray thee, let me come in on today, for he knew not that she was his daughter, he knew. And she said, 
I'm sorry. But I'm really for my system. That's why I have to turn my head. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to her, I pray thee by the I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter in law. And she said, What will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thou give me a pledge till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? Let's take note of this verse. And she said, Thy signet and thy bracelet and thy staff that is in thy hand. And he gave it her and came in unto her and she conceived by him. That's verse 18. And it's, and and she arose and went away and laid by a veil from her and put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judas sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found her not. And then he has the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot? That was openly by the wayside. And they said, There was no harlot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take it to her. Let we be shamed. Behold, I send this kid, and thou hast not found her. And it came to pass after three months after that it was told Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, hath plagued the harlot. And also, behold, she is with child, thy warden. And Judah said, Bring her forth and let her be burnt. When she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are, am I his child? And she said, The son, I pray thee, whose are these, the singlets, the, and bracelets, and staff? And Judah acknowledged them, and said, She had been more righteous than I. Because that I have given not to Shelah my son, and he knew her again no more. So now let's 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 simplify this Bible passage. Whenever you are sleeping with a man, a woman carelessly as a man, you are exchanging for something. And when we mean carelessly, we mean the person that is not your wife. She might even be someone you're planning to get married to, but she's not your wife yet. You are exchanging that sexual act for something. Your signet, your bracelet, and your staff. Your signet is like a signature. This is you. This is what you're using. Big places when they say, oh, this is Mr. So-so-so-so. This is Mr. Are you okay? Oh, this is a signature. Your signature gives you access to the bank, it gives you access to many things, like it's like your autograph or something. You understand? You're giving it in exchange for a five minutes enjoyment. That is how it is. The Bible says these things are written for us, and they are we, there are. They have as acknowledgement to us. So don't say, well, it was just an ordinary thing. No, it's deeper than that. You're giving us something for an exchange of, of something that is not going to endure forever. You're giving us a staff of bread. That is why you see an elderly man, 60 years or 70 years, with a sugar baby of 16 years old and the girl is controlling him wherever, however. He gave out something to get the sinful sexual heart. So, that is it about the message. So, God is opening our eyes. I have prayed and I'm still praying that God will open our hearts too. As much as God is opening our eyes, I pray God opens our understanding, opens our mind, opens our hearts to listen to this message, to take it in faith, in understanding of things of the Spirit. So today God is telling us that anytime you're sleeping with a woman that is not your wife, 
you, you, you are not just doing it. It's not just a physical act. You are exchanging your authority. You are exchanging your your God's given assignment. If you are not yet a married man, you are exchanging your God given assignment because the way God created sex, the devil has so much used the most powerful thing God created to bring joy and love into the world to cause damage into the world now. Sex is for is it's a beautiful thing. But the devil has made people to use it in the other way. They think they're just in the physical, but in the real sense, they are causing damage to the future, to their yet-to-be-born children. And even if you have children already, you're causing damage to those children. You're causing damage to your wife. Because the way God created it, whenever you pour in into a woman that you have shows to the whole world and to God Almighty that this is my wife. She's giving everything back to you because she's the bone of your being. She's giving it back to you. Now imagine you pour into this woman, you pour into this woman, just pouring all around and these women have nothing to your life. They can't bring this thing back to you because they don't care about you. They're not even they're not married to you. It was just imagine people going for one night stand. You just you're just throwing off things, throwing off virtues, things that God wants to use for the world. You're just throwing it out. And another Bible passage we have to read to buttress our point. A lot of people try to say Joseph was just um, Joseph. Um, I'm coming. I'm sorry. Okay, I've seen it. Like Joseph was just um. Maybe he went out to buy condom. There's no man on it who would be able to resist a sexual advance from a woman on a platter of gold without, like, very freely like that. Joseph knew he has glory. He knew that God wants him to fulfill an assignment. He took his glory seriously. He took his assignment seriously. So he wouldn't allow a flimsy enjoyment. It's not even an enjoyment. The pain you gain from it is, is more than what you think you have enjoyed. You see a lot of men having children from different women and these women are not part of their life. It's hot. You think you are enjoying, but this thing is pain. It's pain to your soul. You're, a part of you is with that woman, and she can't be your wife. You can't sit down and, and talk about issues together. You can't sit down and discuss things. You can't publicly show this woman to the world, and yet she has a part of you. It hurts. Many of you won't realize it now, but in, the, in, the, in, the, in your own in this, that is when you really wish... That you have built all these stages of your life with it. just one woman and you don't have to divide yourself all around. Even if she never gets pregnant, she never got pregnant for you, or she doesn't have a child for you. You still feel it because it's spiritual, it's not physical. I've thought so much about the women's part and this time around God is allowing me to, to talk about the men's part too. So now let's read. An example of a man who saw value in his in his God's given assignment and so resisted the temptation that most youths, most men nowadays are seen as ifa. They are seen as gifts, they are seen as beauty, they are seen as joy, which God is frowning at. Let's let's take a look at an example. That's Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 to 13. I'm writing it out. Okay. So, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither and the Lord was with Joseph 
Please let's take note of this statement. And he was a prosperous man. And he was the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he had, all that he did to his end. Many times, many young men, when they see people getting attracted to them, they think, oh, I'm the most handsome man. Then they use the devil, lures them to use that opportunity as a reason to start messing around, to start playing on girls, start skipping 10. 20 relationships with girls, breaking girls that becoming so uncultured. Today, the Lord is trying to show us when people are seeing this thing, they say, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. Many times, people are seeing the glory of God in you, it's not they're seeing the future that God has for you. Look at many of our celebrities in Nigeria, the singers, many of them have been. They have girls flocking around them. Do you think it's their handsomeness they are seeing? No, it is the glory. By the grace of God, if God has given you a glory like that, it's not for you to start sleeping with women, start becoming uncontrollable, start saying then as if you are human. You are not an animal. It's animals that can't control themselves. You are human beings. When God created Adam, he gave him charge over everything. He gave him an authority. The Lord, even when Adam was trying to point all the blame on the woman, the Lord shifted the blame back on Adam. Because it was Adam he gave this authority. A lot of men, when you sleep with women on a uh, Carelessly, women that are not your wives, when you sleep with them without putting the word of God and instruction of God to your heart, you are losing your authority. That's why you see a lot of women, a lot of men married today, they lost their authority. They don't, they, 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 they want the woman to respect them so much, but they don't look like someone that needs to be respected anymore because they lost the authority of speaking. You understand the Lord, the authority of doing things and telling people of, and telling their house, oh, okay, this is the way of the Lord. In God's standard, God wants you as a man. When we are doing it, you don't be so sweet that we are not going to sin against God. And she will respect you forever. Not the other way around this is. It is the men that are acting like egos. You see, when you see he goes, when he's in, he's in mood of he wants to sleep with a woman, he doesn't care. He cannot sleep with his mother. He's just so very careless. God didn't create you like that. You should be in charge. You should be in control. You should be, you should exercise your authority. A lot of men, when they are talking about a man is dead, they just think it's by being a bully. No, it's by Taking charge of everything is by saying, okay, this is the way of the Lord. We are going to do it. Now that you're not yet married, you cannot even encourage your your your, your wife to be to obey the standard of the Lord. Is that is that is it when you get into the marriage, you'll be able to tell her, okay, we are going to do worship today. We are going to you will not be able to do it because you were never you were never like that. You never knew how to do it. So today God is teaching us. God wants us by the grace of God to learn from Joseph. There's an example. There's another example of so many other people that were foolish and lost it. But to, first of all, let's read the example of Joseph. People try to justify that he, he didn't. He, 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 he didn't run. He actually ran. Let's read it from me. So I've explained that when people see glory in, in you, they want to come close to you. But when people come close to you, you shouldn't attack them with sex. Even if they come to you with sex, let them see the glory of God in you. Run away from every advances of evil. And so that the glory of God can remain in you. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made his and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his end. 
And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly man and well favored. But he now let's read this verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. What was she trying to, to, to get from him? The glory. The authority. You see girls online today shaking their buttocks, shaking their breasts and everything. And you really think these girls love you? Or I don't understand how you are thinking about it. They don't love you. They don't have your interest at heart. They want to get what you have. They want to take your authority from you. They want to be the one in charge. They want to turn you into Gerudani. God didn't design it that way. You should be in charge. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear the Lord, you are wise. You have your authority. Now let's continue to read. He said, lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it, and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into. Okay. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there with him. <coughs> And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Then this verse 13, that is where you will see that he actually ran. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. So you, you, you see, he actually fled forth. He didn't go to get any condom. Please. Let's not have this mentality that you can't resist a sexual uh, advance on a platter of wood. You can resist it. This was a very, a very good example. But what made him resist it? He saw a future ahead of him. He saw something that, that God has given him <coughs> and told him about. And he wants to achieve that. So if you know that God has deposited so much in you, you will take it more seriously than whatever enjoyment. Let them advertise a lot of aphrodisiacs or, or kayamata something or whatever or make yourself enlarge more or whatever. How to satisfy a woman, a woman that is not your wife, but satisfy a woman. You will not care because the vision of where you're going is what will be on your face, on your eyes. Now let's go to that passage that proves to us that when you honor God, it makes you wise. That is Genesis chapter 41, verse 33. Now, therefore, let's fear you. Look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Now let's go to verse 37. Thirty-seven to 44. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou hast. I told you, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you are running away from sexual advances, 
you're not doing it for yourself you're fearing the lord and when when you're fearing the lord the lord is giving you wisdom it makes you wise people will look at you as if you are foolish but you are the wise one now pharaoh confirmed it that he is wise the lord was with joseph even when he got to the prison the bible says the lord was with joseph if he had sinned against God, he would not have heard it. In Samson's case, they say, he didn't know that the Lord has left him. We will still read that part. Maybe it's the next after this. So let's read, continue. That shall be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And he cried before him, bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and thou didst no man lift up his hand or foot in all of the land of Egypt. That is a man that feared the Lord, a man that chose to resist his sexual advance on the platter of gold. He saw a vision higher than where he was. He was not ready to exchange his authority for something that will not last, for something that will take away his glory. A lot of men these days, they don't care. I see the videos and post about it online. People, men only care these days is the devil they only care these days on how to sleep with a woman that is the devil he wants to take something away from you and how do we how do we sit these days you see how our men they just there one time god was telling me that these days if he finds women who fear god he said he will put the women in the place of authority and those men who have lost <coughs> their virtues because of easy sex they will be under this woman. You are trying to show your masculinity, your strength as a man, your physical strength. You can use the physical strength under the women. So why why do you have to lose your authority because of what the devil is throwing into the world now? Many of these women they are not normal. Many of these girls they are abnormal. They are from the pit of hell. Most of them are from the waters. It's just that they don't show this kind of movies nowadays anymore. In the olden days, when I was very young, when I was a young girl, there were there were many movies like that. Oh, they are from the they are from the waters. They are not normal. They are not human beings. Nowadays, you see ladies dressing like those mummy water girls, and you're still thinking these girls are normal. You don't care. Many of them will even tell you they are choristers in the church. Nowadays, there are choristers that are demonic. There are people going to church that are that are evil. We just have to to stay in the lane of lane of the Lord, obey the wisdom of God, obey the instruction of God, and be wise. So there are many passages actually. There is a passage that I'm thinking of reading now. Let me see if it's recording the time. Okay, 28 minutes. So let's go to this next Bible passage here. Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse um, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That is what the devil is making you to do. But it's God that is giving you over to reprobate man. As you don't want to retain God in your knowledge, then God gives you over to satisfy your flesh. Then He sends leanness to your soul. Then He, he gives you over to a reprobate man to do things that are not convenient. You said you don't want to obey me. You said you want to have easy sex with any woman anytime. You want to become a fanny adublo to all the ladies and all the girls. Okay, no problem. 
then where is the authority? Now you see a lot of young people graduating in the olden days that men that young boys used to be serious with their studies and focused, not going to the university to sleep around with women. You see them they keep progressing because their thinking is right. They think okay, this is the next thing I need to do now. But nowadays you see a lot of men because they have lost a lot of things while in the university. After graduation, they are looking for easy way of getting money, quick money, fast money. And what do they still use this money for? They still use it again to deposit into women collecting virtues from them. You think it's just about the money you are giving them. No, it's not about the money. You are giving out something more than the money. You are giving out your authority. Many of them are not. They have been reduced to nothing. They are just struggling. The gold gave them hope to repair their minds to do things that are not convenient. You lost so many things while sleeping with this one. Some people even think they are they are being wicked to those girls. You are not being wicked to them. You are actually being wicked to yourself. It's not them. So God help us. I know this message is very very. It's very strong. That's why we don't have people coming online yet. But you know. Immediately somebody just suggested to me, okay, come at this time. I was ready to come because it's the message of God. I was even um, watching uh, some lectures, but I had to leave it and say this, the message of God comes first. Who knows? Somebody might be blessed. Why do I have to delay it? So, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction please let's keep that in mind then i've talked about it that's why i'm not talking about it again proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 my son if sinners entice thee consent thou not then there's another bible passage i want to read before i go to judges oh thank god i'm very fast today <laughs> i think it's because i'm i'm not so used to Instagram videos because if it's on Facebook, I'm always like I'm home, so I'm always, I always give you a lot of time. But so I'm being more um, official here, like <laughs> formal. I'm being more formal here, but if it's supposed to be on my Facebook, like if people understand me, I can I can even joke around. <laughs> Well, now I'm just so serious. So now we're going to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 to 20. So I pray I can be able to share this and, and download it so that I can. Okay, we are starting from Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and thee, and my law as the apple of thine heart. <coughs> Bind them. Upon thy fingers, right? Oh, my lady's pinning me, Jesus. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Ah, la 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 la, Jesus. I'm sorry, I love this city comfortably. God, please take control. Uh, I was sitting on my leg. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou hast my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Any woman that is not your wife is a strange woman. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you are going to get married tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you are going to get married next second. So far she is not just your wife, you are not just married together maybe uh by the church standard by the law standard by the family standard or whatever standard she's not yet your wife that they may keep thee from the strange woman from the stranger which flattereth with her words those men that used to go into marriage and seeing all men cheat and telling your wife you just have to oh sorry you just have to abide by it you, you, are, you are doing yourself. You are going into a marriage. 
after giving a, a covenant and a vow that I, I de- dedicate my body unto you, you think God doesn't take note of those vows? If you were not ready for it, you could have just stayed where you are. Why do you have to go and lie to God like that? God will not overlook it. He will punish you. So let's continue reading this. Which flattereth with her words. Nowadays they don't use their mouth to flatter. They use their binyash. They use their breast. They use their hands. They use their tongue or whatever. And they say, oh. I have to sleep with this woman. No. <laughs> you will exchange something. You read in about Judah. The Lord gave authority to Judah. When Balaam was even cursing. He said unto Judah. He saw that a star shall rise from Judah. That was the glory God gave him. He exchanged it. He exchanged it. That was what that woman collected from him. So do you know how much glory God has deposited in you that you want to just waste everything with different women? You want to just throw them out without caring how God will feel. It's not fair. It's not fair. God didn't plan it that way. For at the window of my house, I looked through the casement, and behold, among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, I'm hammering on them because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You, you are thinking you are wise. Now the Lord is telling you that when you are doing these things, you are void of understanding. You are not wise. Passing through the streets near a corner and he went the way to a house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an alert and subtle of heart. A tire of an alert, meaning sometimes they come to tell you I'm not an alert, but dressing up like an alert. The Bible is telling you, take notes. They will not go and stand in the street and say they are prostitutes. But when you see them half naked on the Instagram, shaking yans, twerking, they are the ones God is telling you to flee from. If you want to be wise, then you don't have to fall into their prey. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in a house. This can be interpreted to what most men nowadays are getting married to. You see a lot of videos online. I saw a video one day. The woman slapped the man because the man was looking at another woman. And I was just thinking, what is this? And the man will still stay with this woman. Because he has he has deposited a lot of things in it. The woman is pregnant already. If he decides to leave this woman now, then people will call him a bad man. So he had to do it. Whereas that is why God has created this channel and this uh, group or whatever, this message at this time in our generation to teach us what love is. Things you have to look out for. He said he's loud and stubborn. You can't even recognize that this woman doesn't love you anymore. You can't recognize how stubborn and, and loud she is. All you are seeing is, oh, she has big shape. She has big hands. And when you sleep with her, you start enjoying all that she's, she's putting you through. You see some men, the woman just spends his money any, anyhow. The, the woman spends all the money, does everything, and she's is just in pain, and and the woman doesn't care. The man stays there, like those ones, just because the woman wants you to hold her, she blocks your way of 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 business. How possible is this thing? Because you took something that is that is supposed to be a blessing, you turn it into a curse. You were not wise. Now is she without, now in the streets. Take note, she's everywhere. And lying in wait at every corner. She's everywhere. You find them in schools, on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. I don't know of men, but for ladies like us, you see a lot of men in your inboxes trying to lure you into something that is sinful everywhere. Maybe it's the same for men too. Bible is telling you. 
the heavy way. So she caught him. Now look at the subtle way, the corny way, and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings. These girls lure you. They practically lure you. They go to your weakest points. Doesn't mean they love you. They don't love you. We're going to read the story of Ju Ju um, Samson and say that it is not love. Let's take time to, to learn from God. All these things is not love. You say, oh, and she loves me so much. See how she kissed me. It's not love. Look at it. It's not love. I have peace offerings with me. These are paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Maybe she wanted to look for different women. But she will tell you, oh, it's only you I have come here to look for. Even if it's only you, it means you want to destroy something in you. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. See some men. When they see a woman or a woman, the next thing that comes to their mind is how to sleep with her. Something has been taken away. Until your fuse in your real. Things are supposed to make you have absorber against such. They have taken it away from you. And you gave it to them. You exchange it. You find the name of Egypt. I have performed my bed with man, alas, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us sell it ourselves with love. It's not love. It's not love. The Bible is just telling you that they will tell you that. You will think the feeling is love feeling, but it is not love feeling at all. But the good man is not at home. He's gone a long journey. These days you see some men, married men sleeping with another married woman. Now let's see what God says. He had taken a bag of money with him. And we come on for the day appointed. With a much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With a flashing of her lips, she forced him. This is trying to entice you with her. What's it called? Tracking or whatever grinding or whatever kind of trying to raise your your manhood or something they are not your wife you should run if you know what you really carry think about okay what will happen to me if i did this am i not going to lose god's assignment for me am i not going to lose my virtue then that should propel you to run don't see it as as a free thing it's not free. They're taking, they're giving it to you, but they're taking something more from you. He goes after her straightway, as the hawks goes to the slaughter, or as a fool to the collection of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird is tethered to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. A house is the way to her, going down to the chambers of death. That's so sad. And the next chapter I want to read, I'm trying to be very fast because of time. 44 minutes now. Chapter 9 from verse 1. Wisdom had builded her house. She had hewn out her seven pillars. She had killed her beast. She had mingled her wine. She had also furnished her table. She had sent forth her maidens. She cried Christ upon the highest places of the city. Also, it's simple. Let him turn in either. As for him that wanted understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. 
He that should prove it is corn and get it to himself shame. And he that will get a wicked man get it himself a blot. You prove not his corner, lest he hate thee, a wicked wise man, and I love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in, wisdom, in learning. The Lord is telling us that anyone who sees this message and is trying to, like, she's saying rubbish. The Lord is calling you no good. But if you're a wise man, you will take it and you will become wiser. By the grace of God, I pray you will become wise in Jesus' name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't be sinning against God and they tell you you're wise. That's how God justified Joseph. Pharaoh said, there's no man has disgraced you. You're a wise man. If you're not wise, God would not have revealed this to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. For I mean that this shall be bought, blind, and the years of their life shall be increased. I don't want to comment too much on this word because of time. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thy sake. When he does call it, that ends like this. A foolish woman is clamorous. She's simple and no one can know. She's at the door of her house and sits in the high place of the city. God is talking about those foolish women that you are sleeping with. Imagine you with a man with eyes tired and you are sleeping with Whoso is sick, let him turn in either. See, you are sick and you lack wisdom, come to me. Those who may be sleeping with, they don't have value for life. So you are going in with them and taking what you don't have, throwing it away to the others. And as for him that wants understanding, she says to me, turn what he says. You see, he said, No, you lack wisdom, come to me. If you, if you, 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 you understand, listen to this. Tall waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knows not that the dead are there, and that our guests are in the depths of hell. Today, God is telling us that stolen waters, things that don't belong to you. This woman doesn't belong to you. It will look sweet. The excitement, I don't know. The feeling of, okay, you are doing it in a rush. The feeling of, you are doing it and you don't want to be caught. Yeah, I think maybe that is what makes people want to do it more. Like, they feel it's enjoyment. So now that, that they are married, they don't have to be scared to do it. They feel it's no longer enjoyment. No! What about the peace of mind? You've lost a lot of things while doing it with different women. You're trying to hide your phone from your wife. And you promised at the altar, this is the woman I'm going to dedicate my body, my life, my feelings, my emotions to. And now you, you're hiding from, hiding this, to sleep with another woman, call it. I'm not saying you don't have freedom to yourself, but let that your freedom mean that you are not breaking your marriage covenant or marriage vows. You can keep some things because you don't want your wife to know it yet. But when they check everything, let them not find that you are trying to make contact with another woman to sleep with her. It's not the will of God for many years. So now let's go to an example of a man Oh, it's almost one hour. Let's go to example. I'll be very fast. Let's go to example. I'm going to just hammer on the verses. To a man that was foolish. Whenever you are doing this thing, you think you are enjoying yourself. When the real thing, you are losing the presence of God. You are losing God's assignment. You are losing God's God's leading for your life. This man is an example. Samson. 
the great man. Like Joseph, he was also given an assignment to save his nation. But he lost it on the lap of a woman that doesn't love him. And how was she able to get him? Because they have been doing, sleeping with each other against his will of God. So he, 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 he lost his mind. And that's what, men do. that's what happens to you men when you are sleeping and lose your mind. You think it's love. It's not love. In the last verse 6, time is very fast. Where is thy strength, great strength lieth? Where in thy great strength lieth? And where if thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? Imagine a woman asking how to afflict you, and something is not telling you in your mind that get it behind me, Satan. You're still going there, like, like, like. A bird going to his slaughter, or what, uh, a horse going to his slaughter, a dog going to his snake. And something said unto her, If they bind me with seven days, wheat that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. I think the video will soon end. Then the Lord of the Philistines brought up to her seven grain weights which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Imagine, it's still no wise. Now, there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber, and she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson, and he break the wait, as the tread of toe is broken when it touches the fire, so his strength was not known. And the last said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, where will thou might be bound? And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes, that he never will occupy it, then shall I be weak and be as another man. The latter therefore took new ropes and bowed him there with and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he break them from off his arms like a tree. The latter said, Samson, that did that mock me and told me lies? Tell me I'm mocked. Tell me whither, let me down my life. And he said to her, I will seven ropes my head with the rope. You see, he's already taking close to the secret. That's what happens to you men today. Yeah. You're sleeping with a woman. You will not know the day you easily leak God's secrets to your life. I fastened it with the pain. I said unto him, The Philistines upon this something, and I went out of it. I went away with the pain of the wind and with the bed. I said unto him, How can thou say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me where in thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she praised him daily with her words, and nourished him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart. You think it's love? This woman never loved you. She wanted to get something from you. Any woman that is not your wife, sleeping with you, she doesn't love you. You get that a year for no? You will see it now. I said unto her, They have not come a razor upon my head. I have been a Nazareth unto God from my mother's womb. You are telling someone that doesn't know about God, you are telling him about God. This is why God says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They will not understand. From my mother's womb, if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak. When I was reading this yesterday, I was crying, and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the laws of the Philistines. Many times, you people even recognize that these women don't love you, but you can't get out. You have been trapped. Because I can't imagine a man continue, a lady continually asking, How can I bind you? How can I afflict you? And you still cannot run because you have given her too much. You lost your strength, you lost your authority. Come up at home, for he has showed me all his heart. Then the laws of the Philistine came up 
and to her and brought money in the hill. And she made him sleep upon her knees and called for a knife. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. Now let's read the verse 29. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. In Joseph's case, the Lord was continually with him. He said, And the Lord was with Joseph. This time, the Lord left Samson because he lost his authority. To say no to something that is going to destroy God's plans for his life. He lost his vision. He lost his mission. He lost his divine assignment. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and with this grind in the prison house. That is what happened to you men. After you have sinned against God, you see that you can no longer do anything. The woman begins to afflict you. If there's any woman that they say the husband is a slave, or those people saying Kayamata thing, if the man didn't go to Kayamata area, will 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 he be taking the Kayamata to the point that they say, give me this money, she will give. Do this for me, she will do it. <sighs> Today, God is really warning us and teaching us. So please, let's, let's be wise. Let's take the fear of God and be wise. And the last two chapters I want to read, I don't know how to end this video. <laughs> I pray God will take control because I don't want it to go away. I want to share it. First Corinthians chapter six. Verse eighteen. Flee fornication. Everything that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. And the last chapter I want to read chap I mean. First Corinthians chapter four, verse three. I wish I can still pray. It's almost. This is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. Today, God has taught us a lot. Please, let this message preach. Let it speak to us. Thank you. God bless you, Father. We thank you for tonight's video. We took control of the environment. You put every power. Of the Lord, you put them in bondage. God, I'm very grateful. All the glory to your name. As we're going, as for everything I've heard, please put it in our heart. This um, preaching will still go on on other social medias. Other social medias, Father, come and take all the glory. And as many that will be hearing, let us all be blessed. Thank you for that prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh God, how do I end this video? I don't know how to end it. God. I don't know. Please take us away today. It's almost God, how did they do it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>